Oh hey, my name is Rob Blight. I make videos about wildlife photography mostly, uh, but my last tutorial was pretty well received, so I've got another one for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to remove a blurred out twig or piece of grass or something like that from your foreground. It's kind of hard to explain, it's probably best if I just show you. So here's my image in Lightroom. We've got this uh, very skeptic looking robin perched here. And it might be kind of hard to see, it's a bit easier to see if you actually look up here in the top left in this thumbnail view. There's this kind of faint out of focus, I'm not sure if it was a twig or a bit of grass or something that was just, you see it's going from like the bottom left corner to the top right sweeping across the image. And you might say like, well, it's not really a big deal. However, the problem is, if I zoom in on like the feet down here, you see how nice and dark and deep these blacks look. This is like the expensive lens you paid for doing its work. But then if we come up to the eye of the robin, which arguably is the most important part of the whole image, it just doesn't have the same deep black. It looks kind of a bit washed out. In fact, I think the whole face kind of looks a bit washed out. And the reason that's happened is because of this out of focus branch or something that's basically covering over and reducing contrast on the robin's face. So I'm going to show you how to fix this and we'll make it look like this in the end. And I'm sure you'll agree this looks much better. This issue is quite specific. If you have something like a branch covering the face of your subject, you can't necessarily remove it. It's only going to work like if it's similar to my case where the whole branch is blurred enough that you can still see detail underneath, then this should work fine. So I just wanted to say it's kind of a specific thing but I think it does come up quite a lot in wildlife photography. So hopefully you find it useful. Yes, there are some other distractions, but for this tutorial, I just want to concentrate on the one going right across the robin's face. I have another video about cleaning up backgrounds and that shows you how to use content aware fill quite effectively. So you might want to check out that video if you're not sure how to remove this kind of thing. Oh, before we get into it, I just wanted to say that I'm using the raw file in Lightroom I'm also going to be using Photoshop and I have a PC with Windows 10. If you're on a Mac, you should still be able to follow along just fine. Just bear in mind that some of the shortcut keys might be different. So let's get into it. All right, so here's our original file. I'm just going to reset it to show that this is just the base image. I haven't done anything to it. And I think for an edit like this, it's actually better to start with the base file rather than doing a load of editing to it first in Lightroom and then trying to fix an issue like this. Try and fix this issue first, then do your editing. But I would recommend just making sure your white balance and exposure are set correctly, at least roughly. Um, and then another, another thing that I like to do is just scroll down here, bring the sharpening down to zero, and remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. This is just going to give us a bit more of like a flat base image that we can work with a bit easier in Photoshop. So once we've done that, we're just going to right click and edit in Photoshop CC. All right, so here's our image in Photoshop. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. That's a uh, control minus on the keyboard. I think it's easier to see this kind of thing when the image is a bit smaller. So that's why I zoomed out. And then we're just going to create a new layer. So come down here to the bottom right and click the new layer icon. And we're going to add a layer mask to that layer. So click layer mask and you'll see it adds this white uh, layer mask, which is what we want. And now I'm going to select the brush tool. Just come up to the top here where you have the brush settings and just make sure it's set to a hard edged brush. I find that works best. And then resize the brush using the square bracket keys until it's about the same size as the actual blurred out thing that you're trying to remove. So see here, it's about the same width. And I'm just gonna set my, because we're working on the layer mask, which is white, we wanna, we wanna use the 
black color to paint onto it. And we also want to be able to see what we're painting. So I'm going to go into channels and just click the eye icon next to the layer mask. And now what should happen is when we paint, we can see it actually shows us in red the area where we're painting. And the idea is that we're just going to mask out this branch as best as we can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just keep going. This should be good enough. We can always tweak it a bit later, but for now, I'll just say that's fine. So I've just uh, made the layer mask not visible again. I'm going to come back into layers. And now, essentially what we're doing is we're subtracting this foreground element from the main image. So because we're subtracting, we want to try and subtract roughly the color of that foreground element. Now it's very faint, it's kind of hard to tell. But what I'm going to do is just select kind of the background in roughly the same place. This doesn't have to be exact at all, but just select the background color. Um, and then I'm just going to desaturate it and also darken it down quite a bit. So we'll try something like that. It's, it's still got a bit of color in it, but it's much darker and less saturated. Click OK. And then I'm going to select the paint bucket tool. You can press G. And um, bear in mind, there are a few different options in here. So make sure it is the paint bucket tool that's selected, not the gradient tool. And then make sure that the main layer itself is selected, not the layer mask. Just make sure this layer is selected and uh, fill that layer. Oh, and we need to invert it. So select the layer mask, control I to invert. I know this looks pretty crazy, but this is what we want. And the next step is to set this blending mode to subtract. And you can see what it's doing here is kind of adding a lot of contrast. This is just how subtraction looks. And at the moment it's way too harsh. So what I'm going to do is open up hue saturation. That's control U and bring the lightness down. It's kind of counterintuitive, but the way subtraction works is you're subtracting brightness from the image. So depending on how bright you select, it'll actually subtract more. So to reduce the effect of subtraction, you actually have to make it darker. So I'm just gonna drag the lightness down. I'm just gonna keep going until I feel like it's kind of at the point where it's kind of transparent. Don't go too far because then we'll end up with just the white that we had before. But just try and get it so that the area inside is about the same. If anything, go a little bit too dark and that's fine. So for me, it's about minus 85. But this will depend a lot on the color that you selected. You might have to push it even further. So that's fine for now. Okay, so now the fun bit. So we're going to make sure that our layer mask is selected. And then we're going to use select and mask. And the way we can get to that is come up to select and select and mask. Or you can see the shortcut is control or R. That's what I'm going to use. If you haven't used this tool before, it's great. It basically allows you to control blur and smoothness and things like that of your layer mask. So in this case, you can see we've got this kind of hard edge. So we need to feather it. So I'm going to drag this feather slider up. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, we need to change the view mode. I think by default, it might be on some other mode. Just make sure it's on layers. And that's fine. If it's on some other mode, it'll look weird like this. But yeah, just make sure it's on layers and that should be fine. Just increase the feathering and you'll see that the higher you go, the more it starts to blur. In my case, I think I found around 100 is fine, but you'll need to uh, play with it until you can get it to look as transparent as possible. And you may also want to mess with 
shift edge which sort of pushes the edges of the mask in and out. You can see if I go too far you actually get a bit of uh, a darker band. So I think what I had already was pretty much fine. You can play with this a bit. Um, you don't need to get it absolutely perfect but try and get it as close as you can and then just hit OK. And if you zoom in, you might say like, well, there's this kind of weird banding. I've had this sometimes where I can see this banding. The way to fix the banding is basically to just flatten the image. So layer, flatten image. And you can see now it's gone. For some reason, the way Photoshop displays its layers, it sometimes adds banding. So just flatten the image and that should resolve it. Um, also, I'll just go back. If you need to, you can tweak the opacity of this layer a bit. So if you need a bit more or a bit less. So in my case, uh, because, I, because I need the subtracted area to be a little bit darker, I'm going to actually increase the lightness of this layer just a bit. I think it's always better to go a little bit darker. And then you can always bring the opacity down in the actual layer and just tweak it until it's right. And when you do this, I think it's good to zoom out a bit as well so you can see a bit more clearly what you're doing. And I think that's just fine. So you can either export here from Photoshop or press Control S and then jump back into Lightroom and you'll see it's given us a new version of the file so we can compare this to the old one. So this is our original version and this is the fixed version and if we zoom in we can see that the blacks are just a bit deeper now the whole image just looks a bit more realistic and more pleasing all right well that's it i hope you got something out of this tutorial i think you're going to want to subscribe because my next tutorial is going to be about sharpening how i sharpen my images and it's the best technique i know of for sharpening so if you're exporting images to like Flickr and instagram i think you're going to find this one really useful Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.